This video deals with cost relevance. Now, there are a couple of terms that you need to know. Each of these topics is covered in more detail later on within the course itself, but I'd like you to just understand the concepts for the time being. So, first things first. We have a concept called relevant cost. What is a relevant cost? A relevant cost is a future incremental cash flow arising as a direct consequence of a decision that has not yet been made. So because it's relevant, it's important. It's something that we need to take into account. So when you look at the word relevant, it's something that we need to take into account. Why do we need to take it into account? Because at some time in the future, there's going to be an incremental means that there's going to be another cash flow arising because we've made a decision. So let's have a look. It says a company asks the university to do research on their behalf. The research company completes the research and charges 100,000 rand. So, would that be relevant? Okay. Once the research is completed, it's not relevant anymore. We have to pay them 100,000 rand. There is no decision that we are going to take that is going to change that cost. So, this 100,000, we have to pay it no matter what. It's not relevant for future decision making. It's a cost we have to pay now. It's not relevant in the future. The company has to decide whether to continue with the next stage of research. Okay, so we've got a decision to make. Okay, should we carry on? It says that would cost 200,000. So this is a relevant cost. Why? Because if we decide in the future to research some more, we will incur a cost, and that will be a future incremental cash flow arising as a direct consequence of a decision that is yet to be made. So alternatively, they could sell the research for 60. Now I know it costs 100, but someone is only willing to buy it for 60. Now that would be relevant. We have got two relevant costs to take into account. I can sell it for 60, or I can continue researching and spend another 200,000 Rand. Depending on which decision I take, either to sell it or to continue my research, there will be a relevant cost implication. So, 100, not relevant. But the 200 and the 60,000 are both relevant depending on which decision is yet to be made. So let's just have a look at the key parts of this. Relevant costs are future costs. So something that we haven't incurred yet. It's something that we might incur depending on the decision to be made. They're cash flows. I'm going to make a decision and there's going to be a cash flow implication. Depreciation, not a cash flow. I bought the machine already. They are cash flows. And they're incremental costs. They're not something I've already incurred. It's something that I might incur in the future. Should I wish to incur it? So relevant costs are, therefore, future incremental cash flows. The next concept that should be understood is that of an opportunity cost. What is an opportunity cost? Well, it says here, an opportunity cost is the best benefit for gone by taking a proposed course of action. So because I did something, I'm not able to do something else there's a cost attached onto it. So, let's have a look at this example and just explain the concepts of an opportunity cost. It says, Mr. X is a lecturer of yours, has 12 hours of spare time. This time could be spent lecturing Mac 123 or setting the exam for Mac 123. He does not have time for both. Okay. He could take a weekend course for the company where the company would earn 20,000 Rand. Only he is able to lecture the course. The company would need to hire an outside consultant in the cost of 15,000 to set the year-end exam paper as Mr. X would not have time to set the paper. So, if he lectures the course and he's the only one that can lecture the course, the company will earn 20,000 Rand. But what is the opportunity cost of that? he is no longer able to set the exam. So what is the cost of him lecturing this course? They're going to have to hire somebody else to actually 
set the exam. And how much will that cost? 15,000 Rand. So in this case, what is the incremental income? 20,000. And what would be the opportunity cost incurred by the company? 15,000 Rand. Because by choosing one outcome, they would incur costs of 15,000 Rand with the other. Now, differential costs. What is a differential cost? It is a cost that differs between two situations. So in the previous discussion on opportunity costs, we would get 20,000 Rand. Okay. Alternatively, we would have to get somebody to set a paper, 15,000. Would have been better to earn the extra 5,000 Rand's worth of income. But differential costs, income's not involved. There are two costs that we need to compare two different costs. Because a differential cost is a cost that differs between two alternatives. So example, Mr. X, a lecture of yours is 12 hours of spare time. He could take a weekend course for the company whereby the company would earn 20. However, they would need to hire an outside consultant at a cost of 15 to set the year-end exam paper as Mr. X would not have time to set the paper. Alternatively, they could hire a consultant to take the weekend course at a cost of 12. So guys, either way, we can earn the 20,000 Rand. So the 20,000 Rand we can do, we can either get an outsider to do the course, or we could actually get our internal lecturer to do the course. But what are the different costs that would be incurred? If we got an outside consultant to do the course, it would cost us 12,000 Rand. And what would then happen? Our own staff member would set the exam. Alternatively, we could get our own person to set the exam, okay, and save that 15,000 Rand. So what are the two differential costs? We could either pay 15,000 Rand to set an exam, or we could pay someone 12,000 Rand to lecture a weekend course. And which one is going to be better for the company? Obviously to take the 12,000 Rand and get someone else to do that. Those are two different costs involved. Okay, just to show you something, with the opportunity cost, okay, it says he could take a weekend course, and only he is able to lecture the course. That's why there weren't differential costs in this example. Because there's no two different costs you needed to compare. You needed to decide what you wanted to do. This one is differential costs. Either spend 12 for one person or 15 for another. Rather spend the 12. The last thing now, a sunk cost. So a sunk cost is something that has already been incurred and cannot be altered. So effectively it does ha take no position in decision making whatsoever. So have a look here, it says the university has printed notes for 100 students for a tax class. As tax tables change from year to year, the notes that are not used this year would be thrown out at the end of the academic year. The academic year is finished. There's no likelihood of getting any more tax students at the university. There are currently 70 students registered for tax for next year. So guys, even though they're notes, you can't use them for these 70 students. Because the tax tables are wrong, all of the calculations are wrong. So there's a tax update course that can be run using these notes in November of this year for CPD purposes. So the notes can be used just for a little update course that the university might want to do. And existing unused printed notes can be used instead of being thrown out. So guys, they've got all the notes ready and available. Okay? If they don't use the notes, they're just going to simply throw them out. So should these notes printing costs be used for costing this update course? And the answer is absolutely not. If I wasn't running the course, I'd throw them away. Therefore, these notes are sunk costs and need not be considered in this calculation. Now, I just want to go back to relevant costing. That was a little bit earlier where we had this example. It says, alternatively, they could sell the research for 60,000 Rand in this example. Okay? So there is a cost that you could recover. So in this case, there is a sunk cost of 100,000 Rand. But because you could sell the research for 60,000 Rand, the relevant cost could be 60,000 Rand because I can sell it for 60,000 Rand. Therefore, 
there is a relevant cost of 60, even though the 100,000 is sunk. Similarly, in this example, we cannot use these notes. We cannot sell them to anybody. That cost is sunk. We will not use it for any decision-making itself. 